African-American painter Jacob Lawrence came of age and into his artistic sensibilities at the intersection of two unique historical movements, the Great Migration and the Harlem Renaissance. The former, spanning nearly 60 years, was the relocation of close to 6 million black people from north to south in search of economic opportunity and to escape racial violence, and the latter was an intellectual and cultural revival of African-American arts spearheaded by philosopher Alan Locke, who would prove invaluable in helping launch Lawrence's career. Born in 1917 in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Lawrence's mother, a domestic worker, and his father, a railroad cook, separated when he was seven. After three years in foster care when he was 13, his mother relocated Lawrence and his two siblings to Harlem. Quote, I grew up very conscious of people moving from one section of the country to the other. As a form of after-school care, Lawrence was enrolled in the Utopia Children's House, where he studied arts and crafts with Charles Alston, a teacher he would follow to the WPA's Harlem Art Workshop, which later became Studio 306. There, he met some of the great writers and artists of the day, including Langston Hughes, Ramir Bearden, Claude McKay, Augusta Savage, and Alan Locke, whose 1940 work, The Negro in Art, was the first serious book-length study of black artists. Influenced by the W.E.B. Du Bois play Haiti, in 1937, Lawrence began the 41-panel series depicting the life of Toussaint Louverture, the leader of the Haitian Revolution. Working in a series was unique for the time. As a boy in Harlem, Lawrence recalled, I heard a lot of talk about black heroes. I began to do paintings about them, but I couldn't pack everything in into one picture. So I developed the idea of doing works in series. Early champion Jay Leda, assistant film curator at MoMA, likened Lawrence's serial format to storyboards for film. And yes, that was very much my experience of seeing the migration series, walking past dynamic, affecting scenes of a vibrant movie. Relying heavily on historical research, Lawrence would go on to create the life of Frederick Douglass and of Harriet Tubman. Quote, Some have said my art is social commentary or it's protest. It couldn't be anything else if I grew up in the Harlem community, and I think Harlem was generally a community of hope. In 1940, with grant support, Lawrence embarked on his most ambitious series to date, The Migration of the Negro, later changed to The Migration, quote, I do not look upon the story of the blacks in America as a separate experience to the American culture, but as part of the American heritage and experience as a whole. He rented space large enough to work on all 60 panels simultaneously, each the same size, painting one color across the series before moving on to the next. I had a very simple palette. I didn't mix color. I wanted the series to be a unit. I consider it one work, not 60 works. Shortly thereafter, Alan Locke introduced friend and gallerist Edith Halpert to Lawrence's work, making him the first African-American artist to receive commercial representation. Halpert mounted a solo show, brokered an eight-page color spread in Fortune magazine, and sold the series, divided in two, to MoMA and the Phillips Collection. The Met acquired his work. More exhibitions followed. He was just 24. Lawrence had never anticipated a career in art. According to the Whitney Museum website, for the rest of his life he would struggle between his experiences as an African American and his acceptance in the white art community. In 1942, he was drafted and joined the U.S. Coast Guard. With the support of a Guggenheim grant, he painted the 14-panel war series. The following year, accompanied by his wife, painter Gwendolyn Knight, Lawrence, invited by Joseph Albers, taught in the summer program at the innovative Black Mountain College. Albers was influential in helping Lawrence gain a more refined understanding of employing color and composition to increase dimensionality on the picture plane. By 1949, troubled by stress and exhaustion, Lawrence admitted himself to a psychiatric ward for nearly a year, an experience from which he gained a lot. Quote, the most important thing was that I was able to delve into my personality. I didn't have what we call a complete family unit, so maybe this was a motivating factor in relating to heroes or heroines. It was myself I was putting down on paper. Referring to the hospitalization, he said, I think it was one of the most important periods of my life. In 1956, Lawrence was selected to represent the U.S. at the Venice Biennale. In the years that followed, Lawrence continued to paint, exhibit, receive commissions, and teach, accepting, in 1970, a position at the University of Washington where he would stay until 1983. In 1990, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts, and in 99, a year before his death in Seattle, Washington, he and his wife established the Jacob and Gwendolyn Lawrence Foundation to promote the creation, exhibition, and study of American art. 
To quote art historian Milton C. Brown, there is something monolithic about Jacob Lawrence and his work, a hard core of undeviating seriousness and commitment to both social and black consciousness. He has continued to insist on the larger human struggle for freedom and social justice in all the world and for all people. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and sharing. Until next time.